Hey, welcome everybody. How y'all doing out there? It's the Silly Shill Show, and tonight we've got a complete idiot's top 10 flat earth proofs. It's about a 14-minute long video. We're going to let the whole thing play. We won't be gonging on this one, and that'll be probably half a show. And then from there, well, we'll just hit some more flat earth bullshit, I'm sure. But let's see who's here, what's happening, and yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Um... I, I, we didn't even plan who's going to do a little round table for us. Charlie, why don't you do the round table with your lovely new setup? How's things over there? Things are new. I'm off my phone for the first time ever. I'm looking at a screen. I got multi windows open. I'm fucking clicking and clacking. It's great. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Awesome. Appreciate Dick and me. It's been about, I think, three hours in total to figure out the cord was bad, but we did it. <laughs> And now we're here, so I think I'm going to start with Jut. Speak up, Jut. How you doing? Oi, fucking all you motherfuckers. I was um, I was finishing myself off, and um, oh yeah, you know what it's like when your eyes are crossed and uh, you spat on the ceiling. All but right. uh, yes, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> all right, another well, is stranger to fucking us. Fucking speechless, huh? <laughs> Well, from one stranger to another that hasn't been here in a while, how you doing, Mike Bertelson? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, been busy lately and doing a lot of overtime, which is something I, I really haven't done in years, so it's kind of confusing. But it's good to be back on the, the Silly Show Show. We have a good time tonight. Yeah, yeah. How about Purple? How you doing? Uh, doing okay. Yeah, kind of getting through things. My... uh companion sloth girl has is starting chemo on tuesday so we've been uh had her into the hospital yesterday for some prep mm. so you could use a laugh as well yeah we'll, we'll we'll deliver and we'll start with dk make us laugh how you doing fella <laughs> hey hello hello um a man walks into a bar he said ow um okay that's about it uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready for the ready for the silliness. Oh God, we're still talking about flat Earth, those stupid fuck faces. But hey, what what can we do? Let's do it. Since Commander just popped in, are you ready yet? Yep. Why, yes, I am. And we're gonna have a great night and get silly. Dick is gonna get drunk. Um, I'm probably gonna <laughs> be one of the only silver people left. No, what the fuck be. is wrong with getting drunk? Nothing. Dragon Lady, nothing Memphis, how at you all. doing? Nothing at all. I wasn't knocking it. I was just saying that <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to drink. Oh, party people. Oh, just joking. Well, you I'll enjoy go. your coffee. Yeah. Mippet, are you ready to speak too? Yes, I am. How you doing, everybody? Um, yeah, I'm doing really well. I have my pen and pad at the ready because, yeah, I think I'm going to need more than one page tonight because, let's be fair, <laughs> flat earthers are just, just everything that comes out of their mouth is just pure fucking stupid. So, yeah, looking forward to this. I'm just wondering which flat earthers you've got for me to numb my brain with this evening because uh, I haven't gone and had a look at show planning, stupid me. Um, so, yeah, it's looking forward there. to it. Let's get on. Just write horse shit on your notes in really big letters and flip it over <laughs> and enjoy yourself. <laughs> and I usually I usually put fuck head, depending on how many we have. So, yeah, I've already did done that. <laughs> right, that, just, that just leaves my life coach, Dick. How you doing tonight? Very good. Very good. Uh, M2M and myself both watched like the first, I don't know, 30 seconds of this. So, and I don't think anybody else has seen it. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I bet M2M will be here shortly. And, uh, I am, uh, uh, you know, it's a top 10 list and I'm sure each point is going to spur some, uh, well, some poking fun and some very easy explanations. So I think this will be a howl. Radio, start us up. Well, how about yourself, Charlie? How's things your way? Like I said, I'm just glowing. I'm all techie and shit. <laughs> awesome. All techie. Last thing I need, I think, is a better tripod for the mic because it's fastened to my glass coffee table with duct tape, bubble gum, and a prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get you the proper boom stand. Yeah. yeah. 
you know. Anyway, I'm doing great. Ready for this. All right. Well, here, let's uh let's set this up then. So um I uh I can't remember the guy's name, but honestly, who gives a fuck? You know, um and uh He's an idiot who thinks he's got some serious flat earth proof. So we'll go through them one at a time. Let's bring it in. Is it playing? Hello? He's filming at night without a light. <laughs> Interesting. Bueller. Hold on a second. Here. It's, it's not. Yeah. Um, let me just check something here. Uh, go there and... Uh, You turned on yeah, NDI. Okay. Yeah, it it for some reason it just didn't want to uh sink in, but uh now it is. So uh there we go. We're all good. Um one second here. Uh take us out of that. There you go. You can see the picture now, right? So here we go. It should actually play. Let's try this again. Top 10 flat earth proofs. True story. One morning as I was lying on my bed. I realized I didn't have a boatload of evidence for the flat earth. And I had my top three, I had my, you know, <laughs> had my go-tos. So I decided to come up with seven more to make it 10. So here we go. Here are my top 10 flat earth proofs. Uh, so I'm gonna run through them and I may or may not expound on all of them. Number one. The Most High laid it out plain and simple on how he created the earth in the first chapter of the Bible. It doesn't describe a spinning ball while orbiting the sun, that's for sure. Disclaimer, Ecclesiastes 8 and 7, verse 17. I thought this was interesting. I believe it's referring to everything that the earth got going on. It reads, then I beheld all the work of God that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. What the because fuck? though a man labor to seek it out, yet he should not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. So what I take away from that... Is this going to be a fucking Bible study group? I don't Holy want to be fuck. in a Bible study group. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? It's a lot of crap. But not to mention that it's not a science book. It's also a logical fallacy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's called an appeal to heaven logical fallacy. And not to mention he's telling nearly 8 billion people on the world planet that since they don't believe the way he does in the Bible, we're all damned. I actually yeah. had some tell me that on but, Facebook. But whoever said the Bible should tell you that we're living on a spinning globe? I mean, how many of the books can you pick up that in the first chapter don't tell you that we're living on a spinning globe? <laughs> Maim Maimonides said anyone who um, takes the Bible literally is a fucking idiot. And he was um, one of the most highly regarded uh, Jewish sages to this day. And he said, if paraphrasing, if you take it literally, you're a fucking idiot. OK, I've just reached for a book here. It's the it's the tale of two cities. First chapter. Uh, it was the best of it's times. It was the worst of times on our spinning globe. Uh, so there you go. Evidence was proof. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Mike, Mike. Sorry. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I had a guy tell me that. Uh... Yeah, you know, he's he's quoting Bible verse, and I was like, no, it doesn't work. And he said that it's, and I asked him, what do you take everything in the Bible literally as it's written? And he said, yeah. So I started quoting some things, you know, about the treatment of women and slaves and, you know, and selling off your daughters. <laughs> Crickets, not a fucking response out of him, hypocritical bitch. Yeah, the the old testament's full of horrible stuff when you look at some of it right but yes. you know uh, yeah pick and choose what you need uh purple yeah i've never heard of any jewish people who take the bible literally and why don't the christians get that they stole all of that from the jews <laughs> 
There's a funny crosses in, in in the Bible in different places and ways and stuff, right? But uh, um, so should we bring in his point two, or do you think well, he's even we, done with point one? Well, before we before we go into that, uh, uh, Silk X six 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 says uh, I believe that Terry Pratchett's Discworld books said that they're living on a disc. Well, that was the point of the book. That was that was the whole point. It's in the title, Discworld. It's the <laughs> well, point. Oh, yeah. book called Globe World. <laughs> And and also and also he was a comedian, a comedy writer. So take it take it from what, like what, you know unless Jesus was a comedy writer, I don't know. He did a lot of stand up. <laughs> yeah, it's delirium in the chat. The closest book to me says, "In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit." So there you go. There you, go. you know, Hollow Earth. Yeah. yeah. Grant, jo- <laughs> Grant Johnson's worried about all our our souls. Careful, everyone. You don't want to burn in hell for all eternity. Well, <laughs> I would like that because there's all the scientists are going to hell apparently. So by the time mm. I get there, it's going to be air conned. So I think it's yeah. going to be pretty awesome in in hell, actually. And everybody yeah, no you've ever met is going to be there too. Exactly. <laughs> so sorry. It's a good point. Good point. Yeah, next, we'll be doing next week's stream live from hell. <laughs> 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 well, I'll be happier because it'll be a damn sight warmer than it is down here well, right now. We'd be like, <laughs> Dick and Drunk Monkey are in Circle Three, and we're on the fourth level, and we're all going to join up soon. <laughs> you know something it's like fucking vodka. It's the only way to get past these and um, try to understand. Uh, well, you can't understand the bollocks that comes out of these globe denying dipshits' mouths. But um, you know, I find vodka helps you um, digest it a little better, should we say? You know something about the Tanakh or the Old Testament, right? The Christian version of hell doesn't exist, and there's not really any version of hell that really exists there's just the word uh shield shield you know it's like christians took stuff from the greeks and um just ran with it and their keyboards wouldn't type an s so they had to abbreviate it to hell the christian (laughs) hell is based primarily on dante's inferno let let let's not get too off track here, though, because I'm sure this guy's going to do this to us a lot. Let's, should should we bring mm-hmm. him back in and see if he's going to yeah. close this point out if he's done or whatever yeah. the fuck's going on? I don't have on? much hope. I don't have much hope, but let better do it. <laughs> yeah, that is. No one knows what the earth is. On top of that, the devil has dominion over the earth, unfortunately, and all he do is lie. So this is where they tell us we live. And the majority of the people here yeah. believe it. Is he doxing him As people, sort of? we just simply <laughs> accept the reality which is presented to us. And hey, I like CGI just as much as the next guy. But that's all they show us when they're trying to prove to us that we live in a solar system and there's a vast outer space and galaxies. No. Here's a quote from Richard P. Feynman. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than have answers that can't be questioned. Right. George just make a little splash in the ocean. That's all. See, just a little tiny. Ooh, that ain't tiny at all, is it? (laughs) Ha ha. What the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) That was an interesting little rant, he, or you know, a little speech, kind of whatever he made there. Um, again, yeah. not providing much to go on, though. Yeah, no. Actually, that line he just quoted is the tagline on my email. Is mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah, he obviously doesn't understand what Feynman meant either. So. <laughs> I know, <Fuck>. obviously, right? <laughs> Surprised he even knows who he is. Well, uh, well yeah. I was going to say, I bet, I bet he didn't pick that up by reading Feynman, Feynman's work. Uh, he's probably no. just heard someone say it, or he's, well, he picked it up off a meme somewhere. Well, I'm just about to fire up the defibrillator and wire it to his fucking zombified brain cell and see if I can fire the fucking thing up and get some kind of information that makes any so, any sense whatsoever. 
Yeah. And if everything that shows we're in this solar system and stuff is CGI, can somebody explain how they put CGI in my Newtonian reflector telescope? Because when I look in there, I don't see a lot of shit that could be supplying the CGI image. Pretty yes. sure I'm just seeing what's really there. I mean, what the Did fuck? Did any of you ever see Invader Zim? where the planet jackers actually put a TV screen shell around the entire planet. It, I know it's ridiculous and it's completely impossible and untrue, but if you just believe hard enough, you can pull reasons for the flat earth straight out of your ass. Yeah. Don't give them ideas, commander. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, oh. it's it's not a dome. It's a massive CRT display. <laughs> Sky screens. Where's right the hand when you need them? Sky screens. Oh my God, sky screens. Yeah, because you know, I, I, I'm sure we could build them that big. Why not? Mm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, know. I mean, it's a fucking upside down goldfish bowl in their fucking brains, and it makes no pissing sense. It's just silly. It's ridiculous. I do wonder how much of the current flat Earth stuff came from the movie Truman. Truman Show. Oh, I've I've seen yeah. him quote Truman. The yeah. Truman Show. Uh, yeah, Boy, I love lot. it. Um, I think ODD TV did a did a, a whole video that was about twenty five minutes long about the Truman yeah. Show and um, how it um, proves <laughs> that he's an idiot, basically. I love and that the, movie. I think it's pretty good. When when you look at that though, monkey and everybody, it's funny though because they think that there's all these clues left that really show that it truly is flat, like you know, UN symbol, blah blah, yada yada, and there's so many of them. And seriously, if these people could do like real time CGI, like they think is going on all the time, and all this fakery and stuff, why would they purposely hide clues in so that people could figure it out? It doesn't even make fucking sense. Yeah, I mean, it drives me potty this whole CGI thing anyway because they they just use it to, to hand wave dismiss anything. Anytime there's actually yeah. images of Earth from space, they just go, "Oh, it's just CGI," with no fucking evidence whatsoever. It's just a out the box claim, and yeah. so you know, it, shut up, grow up. <laughs> if you say it, it must be true. Yeah, yeah. We got a late joiner here. I just I said earlier he'll be here shortly. I knew it. M two M Matt is here. How's it going, buddy? What's happening your way? What What are you saying? I'm always late. Is that what you're saying? How dare you? Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you are. So well, it's well, not a lie. No, it's not. Well, you're not just, fucking early, are you? No, that's true. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I couldn't. I could not. I could not join. I haven't seen Mike for ages. So it'd be good to get on a panel with him again. So yeah, good, cool. Good right? to see you, Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Oh, yeah, good, good. Talk, talking about Matt and uh, CGI and stuff. Uh, well, Matt, yes, yesterday we were talking about Artemis, and I watched a video uh, today about all the cameras are going to be on uh, Artemis recording everything, and it's going to be bristling yeah. with cameras. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I might have seen the same thing as you did. Yeah, it should be. Should yeah. Be good. Yeah, and so that's uh, so that's going to be very interesting, and all the flat earthers are going to be like denying every single frame of yeah. imagery that's coming from that thing. Can I just yeah. correct you there? They're not flat earthers; they're globe denying idiots. No, well, no, they're twats. Yeah, <laughs> just keep it as twats. Yeah. Reality challenged morons. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, I like that reality challenge for brains. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I good. like that reality challenged it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you think? Should we bring it back in a bit then? Yeah. 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 I'm so enthused. <laughs> Here you go. Good readings. Anyway. This okay. Is hold the on. Flat Earth Let model. me just pause it's it right closer. there. Um. That is so stupid. Should do we point out the fact that photons just seem to decide how far they want to travel? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. I mean, of course, light can just suddenly, like, you know, it, it, the sun can just like do fucking circles above our heads, right? But you know, it, 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 even though it actually sets and goes below the horizon, it's still above our heads. But like, the horizon is at our fucking the level well, of our feet. 
Oh, but but look at this, guys. If you if you take something and measure, I have a playing card on the screen that goes exactly between the center of the sun on that animation and goes right to the twenty five at the ten down in the bottom, just where the shadows really kicking in, you know, and. I can take that and rotate it, and now the sunlight should go past the fucking moon. But there's this arbitrary line where it just decides to stop. It makes no sense. And what about the, the that angular be... size of the... I'm sorry. Well, I was just yeah, going to yeah. say, we've got the, yeah, the angular size issue. You'd also have the, the issue that people, you know, from one spot on the Earth will be seeing the surface of the moon spinning as it goes <laughs> past them. <laughs> Yeah, none of which happens. Uh, but then, of course, as soon as you challenge them on this, they go, "Oh, this isn't our model." So why do you fuck? Do you keep showing it? Yeah. yeah. What, what, what is wrong with you? Oh no, this isn't our model. But you just showed yeah. your model. Yeah. Well, no, that's well, not our model. Well, what the they, fuck is it then? The, this map, the AE map, is. I don't care. You know, I know Oakley and his sycophant minions keep bringing it up as not being the map of the flat Earth, but. The overwhelming majority of flat earthers post that as the flat earth map. Yeah. And so, you know, they can claim it's not their yeah. model, but then, you know, all you guys just don't fucking agree with each other. So you need to work that shit out. Can I, can, <laughs> yeah, but this I is please? clearly only endorsed by people who have ever used a flashlight at night. <laughs> can I can I please read this comment from PJ CNET? Yeah. AE map is crap. This is from a flat earther. AE map is crap. Unfortunately, David Weiss promotes it with the app. Uh, a company actually made not him to make money. I didn't make any sense, PJ. Uh, e even though he knows the AE map doesn't work. Do you know what works, PJ? The globe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Every single time. Funny how that yeah, works. Yeah, I mean, all you've got to do is understand that there's um, this thing that's like reality. And uh, you can either like sort of realize that you have this reality that you are living on a fucking globe, or you can just be as dumb as fuck. You're talking about yep. PJC now. <laughs> yeah, dumb as fuck. <laughs> Not necessarily oh. dumb, just fucking. Well, believe Gullible. anything you put on the plate. No. What about the we? fact that? Depending upon where you are on the termination line, the further south you go, the more north you have to look during sunrise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The whole it's the whole day night terminator is all fucked up on flat Earth anyway. So, and, and well, look at Australia. I mean, mm -hmm. what happened on that map? Look, <laughs> if if you tried to like, you know figure out distances and stuff using this you'd be right fucked i think Trust australia's me, been eating it all the really pies. doesn't look like that it really <laughs> doesn't we actually <laughs> well, don't exist so you know <laughs> that's true <laughs> soundstage in uh, canada I don't well, but think just a simple question for you does it take you four times as long when you're traveling east to west as it does when you're traveling north to south <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's, no. that's, the, that's the problem. That's the problem I was just going to bring up as well. Is that on a flat Earth map, or particularly on that one, is if you if you're heading east, right? Yeah, you got say say some from the North Pole, right? You, well, but hang on a minute, you're actually going south, or are you going east? Well, which way are you going? <laughs> do, do you see? Yeah. Do you see where I come from? That's, I that's do know what you mean. Yes, bloody work. It, and then when you get yeah. to say South America. And, and then I say, okay, well, which way is north? Am I going, well, and, you know, that's, that's where the confusion goes. So there is no, it, it doesn't yeah, work. Unless you're, standing, yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> unless you're actually gets... standing on the North Pole. Well, if you're standing on the North Pole, everything is south from there, isn't yeah. it? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that's true in a globe as well. But the yeah. problem is, if you, if you then, okay, from the direction I'm standing on the North Pole, right, let, let me go east. Which No, how do I decide which way is east? Okay, let's go. Let's go south a little bit, right? So go. I say if I go one, say one latitude south. Okay, so I can go east or west. If I keep going east, at some point I'm going to go south because I'm heading towards the south. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, battle me. You know, battle me because these globe denying yeah. 
dipshits, right? They always say, oh, yeah, when a plane's flying, they have to continuously dip the nose so they don't fly out into space, right? All right. But, okay, so if you're fucking flying, you know, you're flying, say, yeah. east, do you have to constantly fucking turn the plane, um, you know, left? Otherwise, you'll crash into the yep. fucking ice wall. Yeah, I've I've had that I've had that same problem with flat earth as I say, yes. right, okay. I'm in I'm in say South America. Um I take my plane and I start flying flying due east, right? What is making me go around in that circle? What 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 power or what uh, energy is making me go around in that circle? Because Maybe you got a, point, a lazy engine on one wing. <laughs> yeah, Just because kidding. at some point, again, like I was saying before, at some point, if I keep going in a straight line which you can in a globe. You can go in a straight line, keep going east, and you'll keep going east in a globe. Yeah. It's just it's in your circle. It's a circumference, right? Oh. So, you know, at some point, if doing that, if you, if I go and carry on a straight line in the flat earth on that map that we see there, at some point I'm going to go hit the so-called ice wall, which is supposed to be south. <laughs> so something is has to make me go in that circle. So what is it that's making me go in that circle? Is there something that's pulling me around in that circle to keep going, to keep going along that, that along that latitude? You, you know, I it, think it's the world tree that they pulled out of their ass. And how does a world tree do that? Fuck it, yeah. I know. Yeah. Did DKG had his hand up first. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about uh, it's like you know, north, south, east, and west. These fuckwits don't even understand a compass. They actually said in that stupid film, you know, level two, uh, that um, yeah, level two, the next level. They actually said that compasses point north. They never point south. <laughs> Oh what's the God. what's the other bit at the end of the compass? The one that's pointing south. What the fuck are you on about? How can they how can they even say that with a straight face on, what, a, just, on a fucking film? Just paint the other half red instead just of white. How how can they say <laughs> that with a straight face? I just don't get it. Um we got we got Charlie up for an intro and a shout out. Yeah, we got a new member, Kim Fernandez, Shield Master. Welcome. Been around welcome. a while now. Welcome, Kevin. Yeah, w welcome, welcome to the family. Awesome. And also welcome to the panel, my boy, STST. Your boy, STST. STST. You haven't seen him for a long time, no, see? Yes, guys. It's been a while. It's been a while. I just noticed the last link I had from Dick was six months ago. So Fuck, half really? a year. <laughs> yep, half a year. Well, you found the truth and you quit seeking. Yeah, there well, was a, uh, well was seeking a, seeking a break and taking a break. I think. But yeah, uh, yeah, there was a guys, rumor going. Around, there was a rumor going around. You've been abducted by flat earthers, and they were going to hold you to ransom. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that's, that's the rumor I heard. <laughs> the, the, the Facebook flat they tried to take you don't back. exist because they say that they uh, once you're flat earthers, guys. you don't go back. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they tried to delete me, but I'm back. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's really cool to be back, guys. Like I did literally take a break away. Um, and like the last couple of sort of weeks, I've been trying to get into videos again and this and that. And I was just like, a shields um, notification came up and I was like, oh my God, I need to go and say hello. Yeah, so, like what yeah, you're you doing here lately. Awesome. Yeah, glad to be here. Like I said before, this was like my second home, guys. So hopefully it still can be. Oh, for sure. You're always welcome, buddy. Oh, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it's just such a good good group of guys. And I was just hearing you all chatting away, and I was like, I want to come and join. So, thank you for letting me. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Back to the How dirt. have you been then, Dick? What have you been up to? Good, good. Life is all right around here. I'm actually starting a week child-free as he's visiting his mom right now. So, uh, oh, maybe get some good shit working, uh, shit done for the channel and whatnot. Hoping anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I should we fire like him? A... Sorry? No, sorry, buddy. I was just going to say, I know you're you know, such a busy dad, you know what I mean? You're such a great dad. So, to be able to have well, a bit of you. time to yourself will be good, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Get a few things accomplished and whatnot. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, he's, 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 he's not a bad dad. He just forgets to feed me once in a while, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Get back in your cage, little bitch. <laughs> should we uh, should we bring this fucker in and see where he's gonna go next? 
Yeah, yeah fucking Let's right. Uh, All right. To what's actually going on than what they tell us. As you can see, we're under the sun, just like it mentioned in Ecclesiastes 8 and 17. Also, the Book of Enoch in chapter 77 says, these are the two great luminaries whose orbs are as the orbs of heaven and the dimensions of both are equal. The sun and the moon are both revolving above the earth in a circuit, traveling in a clockwise fashion. The moon is revolving much slower than the sun, resulting in it being lapped. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I've now, got to query very quickly point out in that video that was just showed with the uh, earth and moon, uh, earth and the sun and moon spinning around. I saw glitches, and they love to bring up Nick glitches in from NASA streams. So I think I think the, that uh, that model must be fake because there's glitches in it. <laughs> Absolutely, I saw that too. The glitch. I mean, come on, CGI in it. Do you know what I mean? Like that is CGI. <laughs> It's and a I'm cartoon. Like, it's a pantomime. Like? <laughs> it's a pantomime. <laughs> I did. I did. Unfortunately, pause at an inopportune moment because he was just about to try to explain how we can have eclipses. Right. That's exactly what he was about to do. So I did rewind the video a tad there, so we can regroup there. But okay. There's so much wrong with this <laughs> model. Like, uh, you know, those times when you can see the moon during the day. Um, and there, there's times where you get like a, the the moon seems to like come up and go back down real quick at night, but then it seems to come up again and stay up longer later in the night. None of those moments can be explained in any way with this little fucking dinky kids toy like thing he's showing us, right, Mike? And the other thing is too where the sun is right now, if because this is from that stupid app. So it would have the date and the time that you're currently looking at. If you go to anywhere you probably got that in the well. sunlight and you get the elevation and azimuth to the sun where you can actually look at it, mm -hmm. it's not there. And everyone is looking at a different spot in the flat earth sky. Now they're not all looking at where this, he's saying the sun is. That's yeah. how fucking stupid that model is. <laughs> well, it, I've got the Bible open here, and it does say, and Jesus did download David Weiss's app, and all was good. So uh, it, it's in the Bible. That's back then, there you, you know. That's just, that's it. That's it. I, I just want to ask, has anyone got a fucking spacecraft so I can exit this planet of utter stupidity? <laughs> oh, dear. There's only in our group, there's only one, and I think she's about to go. Yep, here it goes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the next Galactic Alliance transport isn't through the sector for another 42 years. <laughs> you know, we do have a ship, it's just that um, we're not using it right now. Yeah, but it's close. too busy blowing up Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, it's on loan till the end of the war. And no, we yeah. were blowing up Russian bases with it. There you go. Yeah. Loki's pissed off on holidays back to Mars, so he's got him <laughs> taking his ship. I mean, we're in dire straits here. <laughs> Shit. Totally. The, Rus the Russians are good at blowing themselves up anyway, so um, yeah. let's just let them continue to do that. Yeah, yeah that's I remember a whole other that thing. awesome that yeah. awesome video of the anti-aircraft missile basically turning around and hitting where it launched from. That was beautiful <laughs> yeah i've done a video on that and um said a few words at just how you know how i thought that if all the russians were to just blow themselves up this war would end sooner well let's we that's a different show entirely though let's not go that far off yeah. topic here everybody yeah, yeah hold on maybe we should so, get back to the video yeah, I'm going to bring it back in and we'll let uh, yeah, Tweedledum explain uh, eclipses and stuff because that's what he was about to fucking do. So I'm sure the of it. Earth in a circuit, traveling in a clockwise fashion. The moon is revolving much slower than the sun, resulting in it being lapped every 27 days. That's why sometimes the moon rises before the sun and sometimes it rises after the sun. 
anyways, I'm going to stop it here. There's so much more that I can talk about, like the fact that Antarctica isn't a continent at the bottom of a ball, but it actually encompasses (laughs) the world's oceans and continents, holding the water in opposed to gravity, holding it to a ball. Oh, God. Number Hold on. Are you dumb oh or something? God. What, like, um, what, even though people have actually sailed around Antarctica, been <laughs> there, um, seen it for their own eyes, um, I mean, besides that, I mean, we've actually got in a fucking rocket, gone into space, and taken a fucking photograph, of, and it wasn't CGI because it wasn't around then, um, of the fucking globe we live on. And even if the Earth was a fucking cereal bowl, it would still need gravity to hold the water in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But okay. If it was a fucking cereal bowl, then the further you got away from the center of it, the more you'd be pulled back towards the center. So by the time you got to Antarctica, you'd probably be needing to stand at some really weird angle away from the center. Yeah. Mike, uh, that there's the picture up. Yeah. This is the uh, track of the Antarctic Ocean Race, which I think they're running another one this year into next year. Circumnavigates uh, Antarctica between 45 and 60 degrees south, and it's about 14,000 nautical miles which would be wholly inconsistent with the bajillions monocal miles it would have to be if it were an ice wall. Like, I think some 70,000 miles around, it'd be fucking stupid. But we do this every few years, this race happens. It's Yeah, uh, but you haven't I, done it yourself, so how do you know? Yeah, that's true, I, too. So I, I'd love for somebody to explain to me how the boats are traveling in the direction of the arrows, correct? Um, yeah, yeah. So how would Antarctica be on the right side of the boat? <laughs> what doesn't even make sense. Yeah, like this yeah. flat earth with the ice wall, it would be on the left, right? Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That's why everyone's banned from even going there. You know, they that's won't right, think yeah. that they won't think that thing even exists. They'll just say, Oh, it's all fake. They're probably at the <laughs> North Pole. They don't know. You know, and it is it's why these charlatans at the start just go, Nope, Antarctica's banned. Because they know, like, you go there, you witness the 24-hour sun or anything like that, goodbye Flat Earth. Do you know what I mean? So they just make <laughs> yeah. out like you can't go there. Yeah, Flat Earth Truth says you'll be turned back by a battleship. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll be turned back. Penguin. You'll be turned back by us penguins, of That's right. course. <laughs> and you know the Antarctic Treaty says no weapons. So, of course... Um, these weapons behind me here are just for the piss takes. <laughs> no, I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter how many. I mean, they, they still keep, mind, keep saying that the Antarctic Treaty says you can't go there. It doesn't matter how many times you yeah. say, well, okay, well, where does it say on the Antarctic Treaty on that? And you yeah, it says an you can't Fucking dump it. rubbish. Yeah, and they, it's, all, it's all broken down into, um, what is it? They call it articles, isn't it? So I say, okay, mm-hmm. uh, article and paragraph number, please. Where does it say that? And you can never get them to actually point out where it does because it doesn't say that anyway. But and you know, and it, but they short. still, yeah, but they still insisting on using the same the Antarctic Treaty that says you can't go there. And it, it just doesn't anywhere you, at all. But listen, listen, you know? Matt. The problem is, right, is none of those stupid fucking idiots can read. Well, actually, well, yeah, they can. <laughs> That's, this is what gets me. I mean, I had an argument with one guy, and he point he, he did point to a paragraph at, at one time, and he's saying and he's saying it says it in there, and it where, and he says read between the lines. He said that was his excuse. <laughs> read between the lines. Yeah, because that's how you keep yeah. people out is by making them read between the lines to make sure they know yeah. what. Yeah. <laughs> Is it fucking? It's not going to hold up in a court, is it? Like you're not going to like get you're not going to get caught by these bloody armed penguins, and then they go, "But you didn't read between the lines." You know what I mean? Like (laughs) it's it's not going to (laughs) work. And you know, and 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 it's funny as well. There's there's no stories or no confirmed stories or anything like that or any videos of anybody being stopped by a warship going to the Antarctic. There's that one with it's like off the coast of Australia. 
isn't there? It's like yeah. this, this this boat, and it's not really, and it's sunny and it's warm, and they're all all in t-shirts and flip flops. Yeah, yeah, of course they're right in yeah. Antarctica, aren't they? Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> <mate. laughs> I must admit, I got stopped for indecent exposure, but that's another story. Yeah, well, you're a monkey. <laughs> you're, you're a pervert. Yeah, they were um, only barely off of mainland Australia. Not even. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was Tassie. It was around know. Tassie, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Somewhere like Tassie or something like that. Yeah, Tasmania. they were in between yeah. Australia and Tasmania. Yeah, so it's it. like yeah, yeah. they, yeah. Only, only, only about only another sort of like fifteen hundred miles away from Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Matt, so, show me the show me the part in the Antarctic Treaty where it says you're not allowed to do indecent exposure. <laughs> 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 we got a couple of hands up yeah. here, uh, purple. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I could remember who it was who had done a response video that they actually calculated out how many patrol boats would be required to... Cold hard logic. Yeah, to patrol yeah. The, yeah, the whole Antarctic ice wall if it was around the perimeter. And the budget that would re- be required for that fleet you know, was like several times the gross national product of all the nations of the UN combined. Yep. Yeah. I think I know now we, where. Now we know where all that money goes. I'm only joking. Yeah. Ah, go ahead, Commander. <laughs> I, I think I know where they read between the lines so that they couldn't go. You see, you're not allowed to dump your trash in Antarctica, and at some level, they know their flat Earth nonsense is trash, and if they spew it there, well, there are consequences. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, by the way, they have plenty of trips to Antarctica, or even, even the flights that land and go all the way to the South Pole and even treks all the yeah. way to the South Pole. So, you know, unless some flat earther wants to actually take one of those and then tell us it's not possible. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it's... sorry. Um, I, I um I just shut myself there um, before Mike started speaking, but I've rolled it up and I'm looking for a target. (laughs) (laughs) TKG. Yeah, let's let's be let's be plain simple about this. The the people who put out videos, uh, say the prominent flat earthers who put out videos claiming that uh, you can't go to Antarctica because it says so in the Antarctic Treaty. They know that's not true. They don't care. They All they care right, about yes. is the fact there's enough dumb people out there who will just take their word for gospel mm-hmm. and just and just keep on repeating it and then go into Facebook and like, saying the same thing over and over and over yeah. again, winding Mike Bertelson up at a right trait. And because the, it, it, it's simply, they just don't care. They don't care about the truth. And the, yeah. the fact that they call themselves truthers is the most ridiculous statement that, or, totally. or, or a, so, a name yeah. they can associate themselves. It's, it's just bonkers. I love the phrase. Um, there's this kind of phrase, like a meme, I think, and it kind of says, like, a flat earther is like, you listen to someone on YouTube telling you not to listen to what anybody ever tells you again, and you believe that person. Do you know what I mean? Like, where... In one sentence, they're saying you can't trust anything anyone ever says, but you can trust me, you know. And it's just, <laughs> it's just you fall for it. Well, well, you don't, I did, but like you. Well, guys yeah, I was going to say, let's face, it, let's face it. Oh. You, yeah. you are a prime example of someone who got sucked into it, and and mm. luckily realised later. So, if anybody can talk about it in with that kind of authority, it's Probably. you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the one thing I can have a have a little bit of authority on, like, say, me and uh, auditing the absurd. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, that is my area. My area of expertise is fucking up and admitting to it. Do you know what I mean? But like, yeah, it's just kind of story of my life. Really, it is, but you know, like, you guys will sit here and go, "You stupid idiots," and I'm with you. You know, because I'll admit I used to be one. You know, so I'm not going to, like, sit here trying to stand up for them anymore because they've had their time. Do you know what I mean? I've left Flat Earth over two years ago, and I'm thinking, like, if you still believe that, nah, man, like, you've, you've, you're seriously 
you're not even trying, are you? Well, you know, well, the, fun, yeah. looking for the truth. Well, the funny like, side of it is, uh, uh, seek truth, speak truth, is the fact that um, y- y- they don't listen to you because mm. you've been uh brainwashed by globies and so oh, it's, yeah. it's like it's like what what chance have you got honest yeah. to god I'm the on. Of i gotta world. i gotta jump in right there because dkg you misspoke on this channel he is as matt uh, named him yes very true <laughs> no, no, that, was, I, that oh, it wasn't me that did that, that was uh no no amy's you know, matt Oh, that yeah, Matt. Amy's yeah, Matt. Yeah, oh, yeah super okay. chat, Matt. One time oh, okay. he was on the show doing a super yeah. chat, and he went to say something to seek truth, and he was like, <laughs> "It was so <laughs> cute, man. It was awesome." How it just came out, but it's so natural, isn't it? Like if a child yeah. sees STST, they might yeah. naturally just go. It was amazing. Love that. Eighty-two in the chat. Oh, 82 in the chat says, could the issue with other flurfs not listening be due to penile envy? Hmm. Yeah, PJC, <laughs> some truthers are often correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, my God. Truth. Truth. Um, the part of the Antarctic Treaty that actually discor- lays out what it's, you know, lays out the law, I actually downloaded it that part is about five or six pages long and it's um there's a lot of space in between the words so it's really simple and you can read it and just speculation seeks truth speak truth one of the biggest barriers for people coming back on board the globe once they get into flat earth is simply being willing to admit you're wrong and humility. Oh yeah. Well, well we should. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, and I also think though it's it. Surely it's not that hard. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I, yeah. I get so many messages and people say like, "Oh, saying I'm wrong is the hardest thing in the world." But I suppose to be honest, like I've been wrong so much in my life that I'm quite happily to admit it. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I don't know whether that is a, a trait with some people. I don't know, but I'm just like, it was so easy. Do you know what I mean? Like, the second I realized I was wrong, I don't care if I now lose friends. Like, I've already lost them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's about you as a person, isn't it? And I think there's so many people that are actually more worried about, like, what other people think than than just yourself, you know? And I think that's just yeah. holding so many people back. Exactly. Most people, it's their ego getting in the way that they can't publicly admit that they were wrong about something that big, you know, and that's why that's I have great respect for anyone who can publicly admit they were wrong. Oh, mate. Thank you. I mean, we've we've all been wrong. Like we all know we've been wrong in situations, but I suppose mine was just so mind bogglingly, bogglingly stupid that it's kind of got me a bit of attention if you know what I mean but it took a while to actually accept like you know you've got to be able to laugh at yourself basically um well, talking accept- about laughing what's what's next on the video let's, let's yeah. get back to the video dick yeah that's what I was yes, just going to suggest because yeah, uh yeah. We, we got pretty far off although it's still flat earth and stuff so it kind of makes sense yeah. and everything but let's bring this back in and see where this can you know dig its own hole even further because I'm sure it's coming too this is an easy one the government and their lies they lie just about everything the earth is no exception to me that's why it wasn't that hard to accept the flat earth check this out if this ain't a boatload of crap i don't know what is mysterious cosmic heartbeat detected billions of light years from earth astronomers have discovered a repeating fast radio burst lasting thousands not the way you said astronomers times longer Jesus. than similar events that may come from a distant neutron star on steroids astronomers have discovered a strange and persistent radio signal from a distant galaxy the discovery could help astronomers finally pinpoint the source of fast radio burst Oh man, this is gold. Most FRBs 
which are strong bursts of radio waves this from galaxies right. billions of light years away, last just a few milliseconds before blinking out in our one-off events. This new signal, FRB 2019-1221A, lasts up to three seconds, making it a thousand times longer than the average FRB and also has the clearest repeated pattern discovered thus far. The whole fucking time. <sighs> it oh, was you. unusual, says the researcher Daniel McChilly well, of the unusual. Massachusetts Institute yeah. of Technology. Hold up, hold up. Real quick. What is a light year? Oh, fuck. Let's see your uh, oh, here we go. Here a we unit go. of astronomical distance equivalent to the distance that light travels in one. Are you dumb or something? This, oh, yeah. Yeah. This guy is so, so lacking in the basics needed to even understand what he's reading. I mean, to me, this is, you know, morning news. What, but what was he? You know, what was he about? What was he going about to claim about light years, so? though? Well, I, I want to let him get to that. Said, but, Matt, said, Matt said, here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious. But having to Google what a light year is when you're trying to understand an article about fast radio bursts, like, talk about being out of yeah. your league, man. Yeah. What the yeah, fuck? He's going to whine about how long it is. I, I, the reason why I said, here you go, because I know, I know exactly where he's going to go. He's mm -hmm. going to get totally confused as to what a light year is, because quite often they think that a light year is a measure of time quite often there's, there's there's that confusion with it yeah it's a year, isn't you, it? yeah <laughs> uh what well, it's not a well as we know it's not a measurement of time it's a measure of distance because we know that light is a constant right so light speed mm. is a constant holder. so everybody um, knows that in space distance is measured in parsecs well, we, <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i mean i would say you know a few years ago i wasn't getting very much working so that was a light year but i'm from <laughs> That's a very light year yeah <laughs> So you just know that there's going to be a, he's going to he's going to create a whole load of confusion about light year and yeah. distances and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's why I went. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, there's and the uh, argument. Yeah. Light year. He didn't just come up with the new Pixar movie. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. I am I am curious about where he's going to go with this. Um, yeah, it, is, it is interesting. He's basically, um, I, I mean, I'm not, not too sure where he's reading this from. It's just some kind of website news snippet thing. He's, he's not exactly reading the paper on the subject. Right, no, <laughs> there, not. There's going to be a scientific paper that this this article that he's reading is based on. And this is just like, you know, a little little snippet into the information. Just a glancing look. It's it's hardly in depth. No, it's it's just all incredulity, like the the graphic Dick Dawson had up, because there we go. You know, they don't believe it, therefore it is not true. That's the that's his entire argument here. I don't believe it. Therefore, get a, get a load of this. He, I mean, he started it off telling yeah. you that he doesn't believe it. Well, it's the way he God. said astronomer at the, the, the start. Astronomer. Yeah. You know, the, way, the way he said it is like, you know, no, astronomers. No, no, astronomers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's one it's, step away from having the robot voice read it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, man. These guys are funny. So, yeah. um, should we let them keep going? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I do believe that this will just get dumber. So let's let them do here, it here, <laughs> which is nine point four six zero seven times ten square kilometers. Ten square. Ten which square. Is ah, ah, six ah, trillion ah, miles. <laughs> did he just? Wait, no, wait. He did. Yeah, he's got that yeah. wrong. Right. <laughs> Okay. So, Hold on. Light, years, okay. It, light years is an area. Yes. <laughs> 10, 10 square kilometers, apparently. <laughs> it's not even that big, too. So, it's like nine point something, 10 square kilometers. <laughs> Fuck, what does that I, even mean? I could fit one of those in my back garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. I can guarantee I can guarantee you if he said 10 to the negative 17 tall, he's going to say that's a negative number. I can guarantee yeah. that. He's going to clue what that and, even means. Does it? Scientific and, notation is not his forte. 
Yeah. And look to look to the right in brackets, nearly six trillion miles. So but it's yeah, right ten there. square it's kilometers. Right. Like that doesn't even right. phase him, right? You know? yes, it's right there in front of him. It doesn't <laughs> even it doesn't even occur to him that he fucked it up. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even blink, man. No. <laughs> Just... Square kilometers. That was funny. <laughs> okay, here, I'll let him keep going because but yeah. you know, we didn't get that much from him, but what a fucking idiot. There we go. Which is nearly six trillion miles? Boy, ain't no way, boy. 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 Number three. When observing the stars, they do not reflect what we should see if we were actually orbiting the sun. There are certain constellations that are visible in the night sky all year round. One side of the universe shouldn't look identical to the opposite side of. What the actual Shut up, fuck? <laughs> the, it, so our rotation around the sun, our orbit gets us to the opposite side of the universe. Well, obviously, <laughs> our sun is the center of the universe. <laughs> Holy fuck! Yeah, <laughs> my head hurts. I knew it was going to get worse, but holy fuck! Oh shit! <laughs> so yeah, my my brain can't even like you know gather that up into like so kind of a co- coherent thought of what the fuck he was talking about. I mean, this, <laughs> this, this 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 is this is the sort of thing. This is Gary Wabenga territory, isn't it? You know, everything oh. should look different every time we go from from winter to summer. You know, it should be a completely different sky. You know, entirely. You know, we're a different part of the universe and parallax and all the rest of it. It's like, starting to make Wabenga sound coherent. I know. Yeah. I, th- I think and, those those guys have been watching too much Space 1999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to like that show. Oh, me too. I love. Yeah, it. but the laws of physics are completely thrown out the window. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 You know, an interesting. Uh, sideshow to Space 99 would have been seeing how fucked the people of Earth were without the moon. <laughs> but that's another one, right? You know. Space uh, 1999 was massive disinformation. I have not found a single alien I've been able to kill with a staple gun yet. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 uh, Dick, there was an episode where uh, they actually got in contact with the um, Earth and Earth was fucked up because of the awesome moon. Oh, I I must I just forget that. Um, to no, me, it's kind of a distant episode. memory. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I love the little handheld TVs. I thought those were awesome when I was a kid, mm-hmm. man. Wow. But okay, I'm doing it now. We're going way off. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with Chris Durham that's saying that he doesn't understand three dimensions. I think he's struggling with two dimensions at the moment, let alone three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about one? Oh, one even. Yeah. Okay, should we bring mm-hmm. him in a bit more then? Yeah. yeah. The universe. Question. If we lived on a ball orbiting around the sun, how is it possible that we see the same stars six months apart when we would be looking we in the opposite and there direction? It is. And there there is, yeah. Answer. It wouldn't be possible at all. We live on a flat, stationary Earth plane. Look about a non sequitur. Oh my god. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. And there it is. Yep. Oh. Okay, Commander. so who wants to start? Who wants to start? Uh Commander, Commander, you your got your fort. Yep. Well, there are stars that we can't see at different times of the year and stars that we can see. But I believe that they are acting as if you know, you can't just, you know, you look north, right? But you got your zenith. You can see a hell of a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, you know, like the, his whole argument about stars and this and that and blah, blah. He, he's, he's not thinking about things above versus things like, you know, in front and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, also scale is being missed in such a massive way here. But Mike, I mean, flurfs and scale just don't mix, right? Oh yeah. No, they don't. They don't at all. And that's, that's, that's the whole, this is all based on that. Well, 
it's mostly incredulity, but that's what this is based on. <laughs> they don't understand yep. the scales that they're dealing with. They don't understand how far away Polaris is and, and the fact that we're pointing upward, if you want to look, t- think of it that way. Yeah, that yeah. No matter what side of the sun we're on, we're going to see those same stars. But then when you get down to the horizons and you're going to see something different. And by the way, this is the first proof of general relativity was because of that. You know, the opposite side of the sun, the star that we can see certain That's times right. of the year, you know, during a total eclipse was visible, showing that the, you know, the curvature of space time at that point in, was exactly as predicted by general relativity. So, yeah. and exact too. Yes. And I swear the, these guys as well, they they seem to think that somehow the universe is all on one plane. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, we can only look in that direction. We can't look north. We can't look south. It, everything has to be on the one ecliptic plane, right? It has right. to be yeah. all the planets are on that ecliptic plane. So everything else must be, you know, yeah. it's, it's, and- it's astounding. They can't think, you know, in, in other direction and in three dimensions. It's just two dimensional yeah. thinking. And yeah, exactly. if you look at a galaxy from the outside, it's pretty thin, pancake-like with a bulge in the center. But that's only in relation to the massive si- distances and sizes involved. It still yeah. is fucking thick, man. <laughs> you know? Are you saying that galaxies are very, very, very thin at one end, very fat in the middle, and thin at the other end? Is that your theory <laughs> and your theory alone? On cosmological scales. Yeah, well, see, now somebody's going to start saying, you what about globulars and so on and fuck my shit up? But... You know, your average galaxy, when you think of one in your brain, is Milky Way, bulb in the middle, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, All right. Let's let's see him take himself a deeper hole. All right. If Uh, that's possible. Oops. Yeah. (laughs) Earth supposedly travels 186 million miles to the other side of the sun every six months. The stargazer will be looking 180 degrees in the polar opposite direction with the Earth and the Sun blocking any possibility of seeing the same stars. Okay. Well, he's right about that, and that's why we see different stars. (laughs) Number four. The Earth is about 71% water. just said it. (laughs) Water lies flat and level on its surface, and it must reside in low areas of land. Oh, Water has to be contained. Now. It this has to be surrounded by genius. higher land. Otherwise, <laughs> it'll travel in the easiest, least resistant path to land. And if I don't ever poop again, well, that's just going to be who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with DKG. That's that the Earth is 71% water. That fucking winds me up. I don't know how many would, times yeah. you bloody tell them it's the surface. And of course, yeah, yeah. they don't. They don't understand yeah. that the, mm-hmm. they, they say, well, a, a ball is a three-dimensional object, right? Mm-hmm. They can't seem to understand that yeah. the, the surface of it is is two-dimensional. Yeah. They can't seem to understand that it's, it's co- the covering of that ball. It they can't yeah. admit to any yeah, one like, particular look, little fact because it blows everything away. Yeah, it's right. like one percent of the surface of the total mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was seventy some percent water, there'd be a rocky core, and it would just be water world, man. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like the film. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it. Yeah, movie. you know, I mean, like you know, the the oceans then would be hundreds of kilometers deep, you know, or thousands yeah. of kilometers deep. You know, it's yeah. just fucking ridiculous. Just go oh, get a grip. Please. One thing that always gets me is the scale of like when I kind of flip back to the globe of like truth is like scaling the earth down to like the size of a basketball because it was simplified in my mind then. You know, like I can imagine a basketball. And then yeah. when people started saying like the ocean, you know, like on a basketball, those little divots that they have on, on the actual ball, the ocean would be not even as deep as one of those divots. If you know what I mean, yeah. like, and you look at things like that, and my mind started going, "Ah, oh, I know what you mean." So it's not like masses of water clinging yeah, even, to a tiny ball. Even even, like, yeah. even just even to scale a wet basketball is is wrong. Yeah. That's yeah. right. It's a very good so, visual aid. Yeah, for simple minds, you know, which flat earthers will have, you know. So that's why I've always tried to say it like that to them because. 
that's how that got me through it you know is we cannot think on these huge scales like some people can so bring it down to a, a scale you can understand yeah you know there was a speaking of which i'll do just before we jump back in there was a cool thing done on uh genius with stephen hawking where uh he takes like just everyday people and puts them through a series of little experiments and exercises that they do and at the end of the show they now have definitive proof of whatever and um one of them, they were doing the scale of the solar system. So they had uh, a, a big, huge blow-up ball that represented the sun and then all these tiny little things to be the planets. And they did uh, the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and then the distances out to Uranus and Neptune, and then they did Pluto yeah. at the end were just mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like they weren't walking down a beach anymore. They had to get in their car and fucking drive. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 They, they did that in an episode of Porridge once as well. Yeah. yeah as well, I don't know if you do you remember you, the uh, the TV series Mars. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but and he had um, the commander, and he was going back in time. Uh, and his and his father was showing him the scale of the of the solar system, and he was doing it out out in the desert, and they literally they had to get out of the car. So they put it was it literally the sun was like a, a a marble, a small marble, and then they mm -hmm. did the scale and they did the scale of of Mars, how far away, and he was on this plateau of this mountain, and he had to get a telescope to see the see the sun <laughs> to get a demonstration. Yeah. You know, and and you know, it's a really good demonstration because it's you know he really just goes to show the scale. Of, of of the of the solar system let alone you know the the galaxy uh, i saw galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i saw a similar one on a stretch of highway and it was about mm -hmm. about the distance of time and the guy starts at the beginning mm -hmm. and gets in a porsche and flies it's like five eight miles or something yeah but, in the last like six inches it was like all of recorded history but the reason being the reason why that that I, I just, well, my theory is that they don't seem to sort of, they think that the scale that they, they see is in textbooks, right? Because you get these textbooks about the solar system and they show the planets, they're all pretty close together, right? And because it has to be, because it needs to fit in a freaking page. Otherwise, That's otherwise, right. you know, yeah. the sun would have to be the size of a fucking pinprick and you wouldn't see it. Um, so it has to be like that. So, of course, they get that into their head and they just don't seem to understand the scale of, of the solar system. Yeah, because good point. Of that, I think that's I think that's where it stems from personally. Commander. I have a video, one of my first with the robot. And when I was making a animation of how an eclipse works, you know how the moon has to be between the earth and the sun, and in particular be on the ecliptic plane in order to have an eclipse but it's usually five degrees above or below. I could not fit a scale Earth and a scale moon at the scale distance at all, let alone, you know, illustrate with a 5% above and below inclination. It was impossible to fit inside the standard, um, you know, TV frame. Just right. impossible. So, should we get back to the video a bit more mm -hmm. here then? Um, he was just done there. reading this point, so we might as well get to the next one, right? Hmm. We're nearly halfway there. Almost. Under sea level. Now, if Earth was a ball, the sunlight oh, that's comes. coming towards your feet... I hate this one. ...wouldn't... Yeah. wouldn't reflect like that it, you know it would be a bulge in the middle and a drop off the, as you know, <laughs> farther away but it isn't it's flat it's reflecting like a mirror yeah yeah let's all pause. right y'all pause, pause. what the fuck is wrong with you it's, <laughs> I, you know what's funny about this one it, it, it annoys me when they bring this up but what's funny about it is this actually is a pretty good globe proof and they don't even realize it because if you ever watch the sunset or sunrise on from the beach the you see the sun at the horizon and the reflection in the water is is there's almost nothing and as it starts to go up above the horizon that length of that reflection starts to increase until it reaches you at the beach 
because of the curvature. So what they say is what you should see if the Earth is curved is actually what we see. And they don't even realize how fucking stupid that is. Good Lord. Yep. It's a self debunk and, and they have no idea. Yeah. yeah. There should be a bulge in the middle. For the love yeah. of God, scale. <laughs> Fuck. You know, yeah. take yeah. a take a good year blimp and put an ant on it. Does the ant think it's on a curved or flat surface? <laughs> I'm mean, just stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I I um I was going to do a video on this. This is ages ago, but I never I never did do it. And I wanted to try and get an idea of you know give people an idea of the scale of the Earth. So I got um it was actually uh, fight the flat Earth and also um, conspiracy cats. Uh, I got to contact them on on on, uh, on Twitter. So I asked them. I said, if you can scale human beings down to the size of an ant and do the same with the Earth, you know, a comparison, what size would the Earth be? I can't remember what it would be, but it was something. It was dozens and dozens of kilometers in circumference. Yeah, it's but I mean, I don't know what it was like. Something like maybe thirty or forty kilometers. Huge. Yeah, it's bigger than that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be more than that. I can't honestly remember what it was. It yeah. probably is. But you know, if you think about that, put that ant on that on that really big ball, like you said, Dick. Is oh, is is that ant going to think that it's on a ball? Of course, it's right. Like it isn't. You know, no, they have been upside down on that ball, like you know, there's yeah, they be, wouldn't know. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know, it's not gonna know at all. So, you're no. right, like, even say an ant on a basketball is a huge, like, way off, isn't it? You know, yeah, like, yeah. just a basketball, even, yeah, yeah, we could even think a basketball wouldn't feel that, you know, one I'd rotation feel sorry for this poor fucking ant you're experimenting oh. on. Oh, that poor <laughs> oh. yeah, because if you think about it. An ant on a basketball is a poor analogy because we have ants on Earth. So you've got yeah. to make that ant fucking small <laughs> in order to make yeah. an ant on a basketball. Yeah. Right? Hey, like atomic <laughs> level. Let's, no, let's make big ants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a great ant that's still alive. There you go. Perfect. She big? Yeah, I've, 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 I've seen them. We can do it. <laughs> I, I had a horrible joke there with your aunt and balls, but I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> all right, all right, let's bring the video in easy. Now. Mm. <laughs> For the sake of time, I'm going to fire these next four off without any interruptions. Number five flight paths in the southern oh, hemisphere on the globe makes oh. no sense. Planes never fly over Antarctica to get to their destination. Yesterday. It would be the shortest flight time. Instead, they always fly to the northern hemisphere, then back south to get to the other side of the Earth. Bullshit. What? Bullshit. But on a flat Earth. I just dropped one in the green room. Okay. Fucking get... The, no, that's, that's just plain wrong. They're actually flights, direct flights. Like, uh... Uh, Santiago, Chile to... to Sydney or Sydney to Johannesburg. Holy That's shit. another okay. good one. Those are direct flights, and they look nothing like what he's trying to talk about here. So, so yeah, you, there's the picture Mike just sent in, and this is a direct flight from Sydney to Johannesburg. Yeah, if 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 the Earth were flat, and that's not how that fucking works. Not even not even <laughs> remotely. Yeah, just like before, Mike. The answer is, but have you been on that flight? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I argued with a guy who was doing a thing about flights, and and uh, first of all, I said uh, Qantas was run by Satan, and all of those flights are fake. I shit you not, that was his answer. Of course, of course he would. Of course he would. Yes. That's R one level. <laughs> you got nothing. Else. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. So then, why don't people report that they can see the Himalayas when they go on that flight? Right. Yes, yes. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is like Not people should go on these flights. <laughs> yeah, well, true, Mike, true. They, they, sh they should see, you know, and think, right, what country should I see beneath my feet right now? And they won't see the countries that they should do on a flat earth. And that is a way of debunking it, but they don't want to. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Roll them, Dick. <laughs> there you go. It's there's some really good comments I'd like to just grab in the chat, if you don't mind. Sure. We've had, um, 
Oh, shit, I've lost them now. Uh, we've had uh, Donna, our friend from the from the chat. She put, fun fact, if the earth was the size of a basketball, our atmosphere would be two millimetres thick above the ball. So <laughs> our seas <laughs> right. would only be like maybe half a millimetre, I'm guessing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Mark mm. Beiser also put in, in a scale model of the solar system that has our moon as one pixel, the Earth would be over 30 feet from the sun. So yeah, yeah. there's mm. some scale scaling action for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with the flights, uh, S. Thurston 2 put QF63 and QF64, which is uh, Qantas flights, uh, mm. basically contradict everything he just said. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks, guys. Oh, and by the way, on that basketball, the little nubs in the basketball would be higher than Mount Everest. Just saying. Yeah, wow. way more. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, if if it's only a couple of millimeters as the atmosphere yeah. on a basketball Earth, when you're looking at the water, you know, or, uh, you know, like even Everest, the height of Everest would be like a mill or two, as in like machinist mm. mill. Right. We're talking tiny. That, yeah. I always remember this thing, Dick, with um, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think. I mean, you know, he gets a lot wrong, but he also gets a lot right. And he said, like, if a giant was to kind of put its hand down and fill the earth, it would just feel like perfectly spherical, you know, it wouldn't even feel the mountain. smooth. Yeah, it'd be perfectly yeah. smooth. And, yeah. and I'm wondering um, now, would he even feel his finger get wet? Do you know what I mean? Or would it be to that literally like... Probably probably be damp, you know, it'd be just like a damp... Yeah, surface. it'd be like a little yeah, yeah. tiny bit like, oh, there was a bit mm -hmm. of water on that ball. Yeah. But like, yeah. Sorry if I put Mip it. Um, no, no, that I'm was me. That was Commander, me. go I ahead. I was going to say go as far as... um the curvature of the earth um the earth and an inspection grade granite plate um the earth is a bit flatter than over you know if the if you had a sphere right that yeah was just a perfect sphere and you took an inspection grade granite surface plate especially the shittier grade ones the earth would have let you know just you know just over like a small area the earth is actually flatter in not it's not flat what i'm trying to say don't is say like, that don't say that word it, the F word. it's not yeah there's more curve on the granite surface plate than yeah. there is Per distance than there is on the earth. That's what I was going to try to say. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy, isn't it? So, like, when obviously when Neil deGrasse Tyson said like the Earth is pear shaped and all the flat Earth has jumped on that, expecting it to you know have a core on the bloody top, but you know what I mean, like a thing you pull out the top and yeah, big bulbous at the bottom. And you're like, no, 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 no. Like you're taking no. his words. Totally out of context. It's yeah, you know, it's a like, sphere that's just slightly fat in the center, and I mean slightly, right? You know. Mm. Yeah, ball bearings are um. More, I actually calculated what Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about. We we have ball bearings that are more out of round than the Earth overall mm. is. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. that's precision, isn't it? Like a ball bearing, yeah. you know, that's precision yeah. engineering. So, Right. But they say oblate sp spheroid just to be accurate the way a scientist should. And then right. you've got a couple of laymen that can't get off the couch to get their own beer. So they yell at their wives going, oh, see, doesn't look like a fucking pear in your CGI thing. No. Yeah. Mm. Although I have seen a photo, you know, one of the kind of... Um, the original photos of Earth from one of the, like the, it wasn't the Earth rise, it was like the one after that, I think the original blue marble. I think when you flip that, like there's obviously like a certain cut that you can make and flip it round. And then it is very obvious actually then, well, I say very obvious, you've got to zoom in a lot, but there is a difference. Do you know what I mean? 
So like all these flat earthers go, oh yeah, they say it's pear shaped, but any photo they show us is a perfect sphere. But yeah. you know there is still I've seen a cut of it, and you can actually still tell slightly that there is that bulge there. You know. Yeah, I think it's only about thirteen or fourteen kilometers. Yeah. Mm. Difference between the north south and the equ equatorial. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's plenty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and that's so minuscule when you're talking about, you know, percentage wise. They're just, right. you know, just trying to speak to be accurate is all, right? You know, yeah. if the earth was a ball bearing, it would be an awesomely good ball bearing. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. You know, like at the end of uh, Men in Black, you know, whoever was rolling the earth had something good and smooth to roll with. <laughs> <laughs> Should we bring this back in then? Yep. Yep. All right. Earth map, which is the AE map, it makes perfect sense why planes in the south fly those paths. They basically fly in a straight line. That's the quickest way <laughs> to get from point A to point B. Also, flight times flying east shouldn't be the same as flight times flying west. I flew from Dallas to Atlanta. That's his problem. And the flight took one hour and 45 minutes. Flying back, it took an hour and 47 minutes. That should not happen on an eastwardly spinning Earth. And how does he know it was the no. exact same? Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Holy <laughs> Spirit, activate. Just, just how the fuck does he know it was the exact same flight path? They didn't, like, you know, have to come around for a different approach for the landing at one airport versus the other? Yeah, I mean, headwind, we're tailwind, two, two fucking like minutes. Jesus Christ, dude. That's your <laughs> that's your fucking evidence. Talk about you know pulling fucking shit out of your ass. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. That was funny. Like 43 billion explanations for that two minutes, and none of them have anything to do with the shape of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, right? Dom is a bag yeah. of sand. We we uh, we're coming up on five thirty Pacific, so we only got like half an hour to finish. Should we let this guy get another one or two of his point across? You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm speeding yeah. him up. I'm speeding him up. Yeah, that's a good oh, idea. I've got to say, I've got to say one thing. Uh, you know, he's he's using Enya in the background for his music, so that's going to be a copyright strike for him and possibly a copyright strike for you uh, or us. Should I say? Uh, well, that's going to be kind of interesting. But yeah, well, oh, okay. Well, we were I, I we want, were demonet. I want, I want, I want Enya to contact him and say, no, no, no we're not giving you a copyright strike. You, you're taking your fucking channel down because we do not align with your position. <laughs> yeah. Now, so, your far, <laughs> so far, we haven't been called on it, although they did demonetize the stream literally 60 seconds into our little standby cartoon video. So yeah. thanks for that one. Well, you, you know, you know, you know how some politicians have been complaining about musicians using their music when they come, like you know, come on stage or whatever, saying, you know, you, yeah. we do not align with your policies. Yeah. You just, That's right. Just cease and desist. Uh, it'd be great to see that happening on YouTube with these fuckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute. I, I, I put this up as copyright and royalty free, but not for the stupid. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll bring him back in. I've got him sped up a bit more, so we'll see if this is a little more tolerable and uh, easier to swallow. Six. Let's start with an analogy. Imagine there's a ball, Earth, with air on it. Oh, no. Nice. And you put it in a lot of thermodynamics. Outer space, and oh, it doesn't God. get wet. Outer space. Now, make that ball spin and he go in a circle at 67,000 miles per hour. What's keeping it from not getting wet? A positive pressurized <laughs> system. You know, the thing that's making it livable on Earth can't exist next to a negative pressurized vacuum. Outer space oh God. without the two equalizing out. There must be a solid barrier separating the two opposing forces. Yeah. Shut Thank up, you Meg. very much. First of all, two opposing forces is not thermodynamics. That's, <laughs> what, that's what we call statics and dynamics. And by the way, the second law of thermodynamics, these schmucks like to like to quote for this. It starts out in an isolated system. <laughs> Freaking it's isolated system. There's a, in, in any possible uh, definition of the term, 
a globe orbiting a star in a solar system in the universe is not an isolated system. But you know what is an isolated system? A flat Earth contained by a fucking dome, you dork. Yeah. yeah. An so isolated why system. hasn't the atmosphere stratified in your little fucking density tower, <laughs> dickhead? I like it when Mike cusses. Fuck. <laughs> I almost saw that. Like they kind of they deny well I did, you know, you deny the existence of space. So you're like, oh, you know, there must be a container, there must be that. So they are kind of saying that there's a vacuum out there. Do you know what I mean? Like for them to yes. have their container. So I don't think they realize that sometimes. They're like, oh, you know, there's no such thing as space. Oh, but there's obviously <laughs> a container because there's a vacuum there. Like <laughs> you're like, what? Like they they don't seem to understand that vacuums don't suck like vacuums cleaners. Pressure just equalizes, but you know you got gravity and so on in there, kind of you know making it work. Uh, whose hands are up first, Commander? You're Commander. up. And also too, if we lived in that closed fishbowl kind of thing with a really hot sun flying around the atmosphere, you know it would just impart more and more heat and would be unable to dissipate and we'd all just roast a lot exactly and create more and more pressure as well right so where's that all that pressure going correct be? thermal runaway isn't it called a thermal runaway more pressure more heat more heat mm -hmm. more pressure yeah. and where are, where are all our farts going to go if we can if it's contained yeah. in a glass <laughs> home it, the earth would stink the high Imagine heaven by all that meat dinosaurs all that methane. <laughs> i reckon god put some windows somewhere do you know what I mean? Like he's got to put some windows just for a bit of ventilation. You know, well, somebody's like, a, there's there's at least got to be filter maintenance and stuff done, right? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, Mike. Be, is, there, is there a pressure relief valve somewhere? Maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there yeah, goes the, another problem, right? Where if there's a vacuum outside the dome, and there's air inside the dome, and you take the surface area and the pressure. Why hasn't that thing been blown off? <laughs> okay, Mike, try again here. Yeah, so uh, the other thing is, too, is is the pressure gradient. We don't have 14.7 PSI against the much lower pressure. Uh, uh, you know, let's go to the Kármán line, wherever you want to arbitrarily choose some sure, altitude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the difference between a meter below that and that location is, well, fucking immeasurably small so the whole pressure against you know a vacuum thing is, is just stupid for, and they certainly yeah. don't understand the mechanics behind it and i once did a calculation i i have it i, could, I have it scanned I, I could bring it up if the dome were made of like uh high strength steel um the size of that dome would exceed its failure limit by about a hundred and or no i'm sorry 1100 times and uh yeah so it would also have to be several thousand kilometers thick in, oh. order, to be able, in order to be able to exist but yet they say it's made of glass and they say we have some of that glass that it's called uh it's uh syrian glass it's this it's they've found in the middle eastern desert um oh. And we know what the properties of that is. It's fucking glass. It's not going to hold, you know. Yeah, I mean, it big. would have to be Scotty's transparent tight or aluminum. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fucking unobtainium is what it is. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, it, is it single glazed or double glazed? <laughs> it's double glazed and unobtainium. That's quite durable nowadays. God has yeah. like done an upgrade quite recently. That's what all that fund has been. So, yeah, he's done like a double glaze, well, triple glazing now. But one thing again, I always Are you say saying God didn't go is... fund me. I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's doing one soon, apparently. But um, <laughs> no, the <laughs> what throws me off though, and I always say to flat earthers because they're like, oh, you know, our atmosphere it needs containment. So the you know you everyone here knows this, but sometimes I try and explain it just in a way in case there's a flat earth listening or something. But like, why would we need containment at the point where there's no air to contain because every flat earth will accept that like there is a pressure gradient so by the time this supposed containment is there mm -hmm. 
there's nothing there for it to be containing you know there's nothing that could be you know is needed to bounce off it which people obviously think gas pressure you know they think mm. gas just needs to be held in exactly. like this and you yeah. know so yeah but if there was no... if if there was a real dome there would and you know i uh, i mean more than likely you'd have enough air to have some pressure up at the top too so i'll do this if any flat earther out there is interested we'll find a, a hot air balloon operator willing to go high enough he will be smart and put on and make sure he has an oxygen mask. You <laughs> won't. And we'll see if he bothers waking your punk ass up after he brings you back down. <laughs> you can experience a pressure gradient in real time. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny, though. So, should we bring it in? Yeah. All right. Versus. It's called thermodynamics. Number seven, <laughs> rainbows need three components in order to work. One, misty water. Two, a light source. And three, Bullshit. a reflective glass behind that light source. That reflective glass behind the light source is the dome. <laughs> no, no, there's a, there's a good video out there right now. Uh, actually, it's actually kind of old from 2017, where a guy did this in his shop. You know, it's all enclosed. The only thing he had was a mister and a light bulb. And lo and behold, he had a fucking rainbow in his in his enclosed shop. So th it's bullshit. Well, I mean, fucking stupid. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean, we've all done it as kids, have we? In the summertime, we've gone out in our backyard and with the garden hose, yes. put it on a fine spray. You know, and you just look through it, and you can see a freaking rainbow. That's right. You know, all you need, uh, all you need is sunlight, water, and angle. Yes, yeah, that's it. And, 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 I, and the reason that they're, on, they're doing this claim that it that it has to be, uh, you know, in an enclosed, closed off space is because of those kind of videos where you do it in your backyard because they're still saying it's still reflecting off the dome. It's like what fucking dome. You guys don't even know what it is, let alone what its refractive index or its uh, optical properties are, and you're going to make that fucking claim. Bite me. I was yeah. going to say, I've, I've, seen, I've seen this happen on a uh, blacked out soundstage uh, on a film studio where you, you get the rainbows. And I brought I brought this up to, uh, I can't remember the name of him, a stupid fucking flat earther. And he goes, well, you, yeah, you, you, need, you need to have a reflection. And the, the, the light is a reflection. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so funny. It, it, it's hilarious. Like, let's say, let's say you've got family, um, and they're on either side of a state or something, spread far apart enough that they might get the same rain shower, and. Mm -hmm. Point your camera up in the sky, tell them the exact, you know, bearing to point and say, hey, look, I see a rainbow right now. They probably won't. Nope. Nope. Right? You know, come on. It's because of your it's personal just... dome. That's right. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Yo. It's your per personal atmospheric dome. I've, I've, e I've even heard a flat earther claim that they drove through a rainbow. I think that was, I think that was a snacking what? warrior. Ouch. Well, he must have been hitting that crack pipe pretty hard then. <laughs> <laughs> he got a hand job from the leprechaun while he was there. <laughs> Three wishes. Okay. It's Arwen with a little hat on. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, that hurts. That hurts. Oh, that's just something I don't want to see. <laughs> Let's bring this in for one more. Holy yeah. fuck. Number eight, we see too far. If the Earth is about eh, 25,000 miles in circumference, the curvature rate oh, for that would be about eight inches per mile squared. There are many no, locations no, where no. tall buildings, no, okay. lighthouses, and mountains can be. Mike, do you want to correct them there? Yeah, no, no, it's not. That's a fucking parabola, you douchebag. It's just, <laughs> it's a fucking circle. We know this, how to calculate a circle. I mean, if you can't figure that part out, you should not be making any fucking claims. 
holy crap eight inches per mile square is okay for short distances where you need yes. to make estimates but it, and surveyors would probably actually take the measurement and not do an estimate if they needed to do that like you couldn't have built fucking ligo by assuming in an eight inches although it would be fairly accurate you wouldn't assume that though so and it's also you know, it's also ground level not observer observer height level that's true. Oh, yeah. It's like, fuck. there you go. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Here, I'll let him keep going. <laughs> Viewed at 50, 60, even 100 miles from a low elevation off the ground. They should be behind the supposed curve. Yeah. Number nine, no. the North Pole Star Polaris is always stationary in the sky. On an Earth that's tilted, spinning, and orbiting over 500 million no, miles know, around the sun. But. Fuck There's no. no way. The wobbles about half of the grade. Yeah. Okay. That's hold that's, on. What? What the fuck does our distance from the sun have anything to do with Polaris being not, in the sky? Not a, not, a, not a fucking thing. And oh, by the way, Polaris wasn't always the pole star. That's and right. It won't be always be the pole star. Yes. That's right. Uh, I when the great the pyramids were built, thing. it was Thuban. And, that's and right. That's, that's well documented. I mean, but you I tell this to them, and there was actually a time between Thumid and there was another another star. I think in, in Draconis, I can't remember what it is, and Polaris. That there was no fucking North Star. You just had to like guesstimate where North is by a certain constellation, set a series of constellations that were close enough, because we process and after this it'll be some i think vega or something like that That's is, what is I the said. next yeah yeah so yeah the the procession of the equinox so no it's not always been and he's probably going to fucking talk about the stupid guide stones well, too again 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 he's all he's doing again is just repeating things that he's heard he, he is in no way either. qualified to talk about right. any of the shit no, he's yeah. not. You're right. You're absolutely right, DK. And and he's just he's just a fucking parrot is all he's doing. And yeah. I guarantee you the guidestones are coming. I guarantee you because of that stupid hole that was there before that somebody blew him up. And then uh the and actually if you look through those, you really can't actually see it too well. You sort of have to cant to the side because it won't be in position to be centered in that hole for about another 70 or 80 years. And then it starts to move on the, uh, out the other side due to, due to yeah. the perception of the equinox. So, and, and you, you can't explain what is that it? to them. Is it what? 33 or 36,000 years, the cycle? Yeah, so or 42. Yeah, it's it's something long, 30 to 40,000 years, someplace in there. Um, yeah. And it, it comes that, right that's, back that's to how, itself. That, that's how long it takes for you to cycle my underpants. <laughs> uh okay i got i well, can't okay. even up with anything back yeah 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 <laughs> that's a crusty thing to say um <laughs> should so we're we're going almost on quarter to the top quarter to the hour here so let's get, let him do one more and then i think we'll he's only got laugh. one more left yeah oh really really yeah. did we actually fucking make it oh I my think this god is under nine, did. Right? yeah yep. i think we are close you're right okay Let's let him do it. Race, and race to the end. <laughs> yeah, I might speed him up more. That star will remain stationary like it does. Yeah, the you're right. The Georgia Guidestones There's were erected guy. over 40 years ago. You're right. And you can still view Polaris through a hole that was drilled in the middle of it. See? I wonder who blew them things up. See? Yeah, you knew it, Mike. You did it. It also Fucking has dick, slots yeah. in them so that they indicate when the sun is in its solstices and equinoxes. I guarantee yeah, you, you know whoever designed those goes? stones like that was a flat earther. <laughs> Correction. So as of oh, there it is. July the 6th, 2022, you can no longer go view the Georgia Guy stones because someone decided Damn. to blow them up. Yep. With that said, I'd like to take this opportunity was. to tell you to yeah. uh, check out my other video I have. It's all about uh, viewing Polaris as an experiment. It's about putting oh, no, advice no. where you can yeah. uh, view Polaris, oh, Polaris as many times. Visible on the earth. Or okay, here we go. You want from the comfort of your own home. No shilling, you bitch. Yeah. Okay, number 10. No curvature visible on the earth. In 2013, oh, I took my first flight as a globe believer. I thought I was going to see the curve of the earth, but I was disappointed. Yeah. All I saw was land no, that faded out due to the yeah. haze. 
be on that day trying to see the curvature of the earth. I said to myself, I must need to Did get higher shit? in order to see the curve. Yeah. To get that high, we must rely on NASA. The okay. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Um, Mike, do you want to explain the height of uh, commercial flights and so on? And I'll get yeah. your picture ready. Yeah, commercial flights. I mean, even at, at 36,000 feet, the window is kind of small. It's kind of hard for you to get a, enough of a field of view without sticking your face right into that glass to be able to, to see it. But it, it, you can, if you get that close, you can go out there and you can look and you may be able to discern it depending upon what the weather conditions are. But there are, these, uh, these globe deniers love to use high altitude video uh they take the cherry pick screenshot and show look look flat flat and of course they always take them from someone with a using a gopro so they have to wait till the frame gets where they want it to get their flat thing yeah. this, this picture you're going to show you is yeah, from I a, gotta hear. A, yeah this is this is what shot with a uh um a, a panasonic lumix camera but it's a loa lens and it's an ultra wide angle 100 i think it's 110 degrees of view but it's a rectilinear lens and and, and i'll get i i'll give you guys the the video link if i if i can remember and, and what happens is, is no matter where this thing is in the frame it's always got that curve because it's a rectilinear lens and i bring this up That's to right. them i even given the link to the goddamn video and they say no i see distortion i see distortion but the but fucking, there isn't no but there isn't yeah there is not there's virtually zero barrel distortion on on that lens and yeah, it's designed and can, specifically for that and you can clearly see the atmosphere and the earth both in curve together Yes, and I shot this in. I took this screenshot from a, a program called Shotcut. If anybody's interested, it's like free to download and use. And you, you can overload this grid. The grid. This is actually for aligning like graphics and text and stuff. But it, yeah. you can clearly see the curvature in, in this. And this is a, a. I forget what the altitude is. It's pretty well up there. So is the you know they want to like say oh, there's no curvature there's no curvature I got plenty of examples of rectilinear lenses having showing curvature yep. from these high altitude and, balloon videos and and Mike along with the along with images like this there's been times when they show images that have such such slight curvature it's not funny but yeah. if you just grab the picture and squeeze it so it's really yeah. skinny it amplifies it and you can see it it's so easy to do. Yes, it is. Right? Yes, it and, is. And, and, this stuff, and it's not beat around the bush. I mean, I have to do this as a living. Uh, taking out camera distortions is relatively easy. Just shoot the lens grid uh, of the camera, and you can use that to remove any lens distortions. Mm -hmm. So it's not yeah. a big deal, even, even, even like crazy bonkers uh, fisheye lenses. And, that, yeah. and that's why 360 cameras work. 360 cameras work. They're like usually two fisheye lenses, but it's calibrated in such a way. If, if to, to, to make the 3D world, the 360 world you view work, that's and right. if they weren't calibrated right, it would 360 cameras wouldn't work. Yeah, and this is a this is a guy who has an Emmy for visual effects work. So I kind of think he knows what he's fucking talking about. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, Mike. Yeah, the the uh, there's a good uh, video or a good uh, set of pictures taken from a um, an observatory. A guy has he could show the star trails in both directions, and he did exactly what DKC, D, uh, DKG says. He used two cameras with fisheye lenses. And then digitally combined them in, uh, removed the barrel distortion, and it's an amazing shot. And you, and you could tell that he did it properly because all of the lines of the observatory and the buildings and all that stuff is great. They're straight mm -hmm. like they should be. And, and and it's an amazing shot. And by the way, opposite star trails, hmm, what does that prove? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, ST, were you trying to get the hand up and jump in there? Yeah, yeah, it was. I was uh, getting in, actually. I was like, oh, I can put my hand up. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to... Um, yeah, thanks for, for letting me in there. I just wanted to add a little bit on that the, the picture that uh, Mike was showing there. And yeah, I'll bring it back what up. What I think is, you know, regardless, say, even if you can see curvature or not there, which obviously clearly you can, but why can't you see far enough? You know, you always hear the indoctrination into the flurfs is, 
we can see too far. But no, 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 no. Like, we can see nowhere near far enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so this picture no, here... No, no, the clear well, they're, always, they're always confused with that, because one minute they say we see too far, and the next minute you say something, and, and they go, oh, no, we can't see that far. No, make your I fucking know. mind up. <laughs> You know, because with that logic, me in British Columbia, I should be able to use my Newtonian telescope to take a look at Mount Everest, but it just doesn't seem to fucking work. Uh, Mike Bertelson, you're up. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a good spreadsheet for, for, for calculating that distance to the horizon and, and the curve, the amount of curvature you should see in the field of view. And, it, and it's that's something they'd like to ignore. And, and they talk about those distances, too, when you like the distance because the sun is setting because you know there's atmospheric electroperspectivism that causes it to look like it's setting when it's yes. actually moving away from it but yeah. yet where are the stars are they closer to us than the sun is because when the sun sets we see all the fucking stars yeah. so if they're if it's atmospheric stupidity that makes the sun set and rise when it should be push, pulling away from us and it gets too far away for us to be able to see, then where the hell are the stars? We shouldn't yeah. even be able to see those, should we? Yeah. It's all perspective, isn't it? Yeah. And even when, even one that gets me is like even the horizon. So if you're at beach level, the horizon might be, I don't know, say the horizon's nine, ten miles away, something like that. And then the sun's setting, and even on a flat earth, it's got to be, what, 300 miles up at least? So it's setting, yeah. it's getting too far away. So, oh, your eye can only see to the horizon on the, the waterline 20 miles, but millimeters above that, it can see 300 miles yeah. at least. You know, and you're uh, just like, Whoa. like, yeah, it's <laughs> it. And then the whole thing with the sun being in the clouds, it's all over oh. Facebook right now. The sun is in the clouds. The sun yeah. is in the clouds. <laughs> well, if the sun's in the clouds, then the fucking thing's only about 15 or 16,000 mm -hmm. feet up. So you're still, what, four to five yeah. kilometers? Yeah, but so how big is it? Maybe one or two kilometers yeah. across? And even yeah, you think half the planet can see that. Yeah, that yeah, 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 but, but half but, the planet can see that. But even a nuclear fusion reaction two kilometers in diameter would yeah. pretty much blow our atmosphere away and everything Absolutely. would die. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and with the angular size, I mean, so if you choose where the sun is in the clouds and then figure out some other place that you could still see the sun in the sky and then figure out the angles and the angular size and the stand thing would be like so big, it would be dragging a fucking molten trench through the earth if it was only 15,000 feet up. It's like, you know, you guys don't even think about the implications of that stupid ass statement. Yeah. Uh, PJ's on a roll tonight, zinging. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, um, speaking of tonight, though, I mean, shit, we're yeah. really close here. It looks like it's time for some roundtable wrap-ups and whatnot and, uh, you know, kissing shit to the wind. So, Charlie, you want to take it over again and take us around the room, buddy? Sure, sure, sure. Let's start with the new – let's start with the Seeky Poo, my man. Oh, what did you think of tonight? Yeah, I mean, I was actually just thinking that, how crazy this is, because it's been about six months, Charlie Poo, and the last time I was on the shills, you had just started speaking. Like, yeah. it was quite like, oh, my God, Charlie's actually, like, not just now a great commenter. He's coming in and he's, he's joining the stream. But now you're ending the stream as a shill. Like, and I'm just in awe, mate, and I'm just like, well done, you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Right, right. Come my way. Let's go random style. Let's go <laughs> commander. Excellent night. Um, yeah. Very fun. Great to see you seek truth, speak truth, and um, hope you'll be around for many, many more. I will. I will. I'll, I'm, I've always been around <laughs> um, like, like a bad fly. You'll never get rid of me. Um, but I'll, I'll come back on a lot more. I will. I just Brick saw the up. screen. Brick him up. Brick him up. Brick him up. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, we, uh, what do you think of well, the Sorry, Dick. Sorry, Dick. 
Yeah, sorry, Charlie. One sec, though. Uh, for everybody watching, if you don't know, that's that guy Arwin we've been picking on tonight, the flat earther. And, uh, well, you know, I think he found his own pleasure at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> that's just great. Anyway, Matt, what did you think of this evening, sir? Yeah, it was yeah, it was good. Um, good to see Mike back on the show as well. Uh and STST, good to see you back as well. So um, hopefully we'll start hearing from you and some videos and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. Always a pleasure. Never a chill, as always. Legend. Mike Bertelson back from the blue. What'd you think? You had a lot to say. It's very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was uh, yeah, entertaining. And we'll say that this guy is, he's definitely new to this because... One, he's just parroting, and two, he doesn't understand what he's parroting. That's clear. And it was uh, it was definitely fun. It's good to be back on. Uh, I love the Silly Shill Show, and uh, so it's it's good to be back. And uh, we got a we got another good show tomorrow night, guys. So don't miss that one either. Yep, yep. Purple, what'd you think? Are you back? Yeah, yeah. Stepped away for a bit, but yeah, most of it still comes down to the same thing that. They just don't have any concept of scale. I don't see what you mean, Dick. What did I mess up? Sorry, what? Huh? Huh? I worry. Oh, oh yeah, no worry. worries, Charlie. Yeah, you know what? Right. Just keep going. All right. Who we got left here? Well, did Mippet take some notes? Of Is course I took some notes. All right. Why would I not take notes? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, the first thing I did notice, he used the word expound. That was just to scare everyone, I'm sure. Um, and then he went on about elastic, please, or some shit. Uh, and then he loves CGI. Well, good for him. And then he showed us a clock made of the flat earth non whatever model that they don't say is the model i'm so confused um yes then we went on to antarctica uh and you can't go to oh look i'm i was totally confused that there's south everywhere and no one can go anywhere and all that sort of thing then there was number two the government lies well god we all know that don't we um but I was I was quite fascinated about the fast radio bursts. I'm going to have a look about those because that actually sounded really interesting. But 10 kilometres squared, I mean, nearly <laughs> 6 trillion miles. Holy fuck. I just, yeah, that was, I was just laughing at that. That was so good. And looking up <laughs> awesome. light year in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. And then there was... One side of the universe shouldn't look the same as the other. I just, holy shit, what the fuck is what I've written for that? I just, <laughs> I, oh, my God. And, it, yeah, the scale thing, that's the one thing that all of them, none of them get it, is scale for fuck's sake. And, you know, it's massive, people. It's huge. And they just don't seem to get that. So I get really pissed off when it's all scale stuff. Um, then we had, so that was number four. Uh, number five, oh, oh no, number five. Uh, oh, shit. He, see, I get all mixed up because it was so fucking running in together. Um, oh, the sun reflecting like a mirror um, and they expect a bulge in the water for fuck's sake. Uh, then we had the flight times, which is their usual just bullshit crap out of their ass, flying in fucking straight lines. It's called a great circle route, you fuckwits. Uh, and we had the <laughs> static forces and thermodynamics that had nothing to do with anything. And then I've just put a little note. I went and said, my paying attention. And then I got back and it was rainbows. Uh, uh, eight inches per mile squared is a parabola, you fuckheads. Uh, not one globe proponent says that, so just stick that right up your butt. <laughs> oh, do we lose Mippet? I think we might have done, yeah. Mippet, you there? 
Or oh, have you muted boring. yourself? Or is she? No, she's still there. She, are you muted? Maybe a bit by accident. We can't hear you. I think she's exploded herself with her words. own dragon Did flames. Did Australia cease to exist again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Australia we, have taken over. Australia's yeah, we, glitched out again. <laughs> we, we we moved Australia ten feet to the left, and uh, you know we lost the internet connection. Well, DK, I think you're the last one, other than her, if she wants to finish up. How would you think of tonight? Are you sure about that? Have we done everybody? I think so. Orange, purple, oh. monkey. <laughs> Yeah, you called on me already. Well, I'm okay. Well, that just shows I wasn't paying fucking attention. Well, <laughs> anyway, look at that. I mean, the fucking flat earth is. It's, it's amazing that, you know, thousands of years ago, philosophers managed to figure out the shape of the earth. And uh, in, in, in the 21st century, we have armchair philosophers on Facebook and YouTube and whatever trying to refigure out again. I would love to have seen the meeting of minds, taking them and the ancient philosophers together and seeing the ancient philosophers in Greek saying, shut up, you fucking moron. I don't know how they say it in Greek. I'm sure someone could do it in the chat, whatever. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, what a load of shit, honest to God. Um, what did we talk about? You know, well, you um, know. As, as soon on. as they had boats leaving the Mediterranean, they got the thing of, oh my God, that boat's sinking. And then a couple <laughs> weeks later, that boat came back again. Yeah. Oh, no, they, no, no, they zoomed in, brought it back into view. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. And, and well, uh, Mike was talking about rectilinear lenses. Uh, I think the only thing flat earthers know about rectilinear is as long as it's going in straight. Um, <laughs> oh, um, what else were they talking about? Oh, dear. The universe looks different on the other side. Funny, I've got a t shirt like that. Um, yeah, just what a load of shit. Honestly, God, I don't, I, I really don't understand why anybody buys into it. You've got to be a fucking moron. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's that's my thought. You're fucking morons, flat earthers. Give it yeah. up. <laughs> Mix, what do you think? Oh, my oh, God. Back. It's working. Oh, shit. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. Okay. Well, I was down to nearly the last one anyway. Um, the Georgia stone guide stones that got blown up. Yeah, they're, they're great. Um, and no vis visible curvature. Well, we either see too far or we can't see that far, and it's all very confusing, and he was a big dickhead. So there you go. They were the notes for the evening. Sorry that I uh, suddenly disappeared, but, you know, me and technology. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and also, also also on that point, uh, never mind all the pictures of visible curvature. Oh, oh they're just CDI. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, just on visible curvature quick, if you were to go to the Makati Desert, um, you know, where he top gear filmed an episode there way back in the day, you could take a drone, point it at the desert and you don't even have to go up that high. And if you take that picture and squeeze it, you can see curvature because it's just simply a perfectly smooth surface that yep. goes from one side of the horizon to the other. It can be done, but it's tiny, right? Anyway, yes. keep going there, Charlie. Well, I think that was it. Your your final thoughts and think that's about it, isn't it? Oh, we haven't done okay. yet, Charlie. My no. <laughs> my uh, my challenge is to all flat earthers, and it's in regards to gravity. If you don't believe in it, and yada yada, and so on and so forth, I pose this question to you. If there is a breeze blowing by a wall and you're around the corner from it so that you've got a low pressure zone because of the aerodynamics and the air passing by and stuff, if you were to release a feather from your hand, would it carry into the wind or would it fall to the ground? They can't understand the you know, some objects can be grabbed by, you know, air and aerodynamics and some objects are just instantly gravity is going to hit them. And I think they get very confused by that sometimes, you know. Um, my other thing would be take a trip up in a hot air balloon. And even if you don't go high enough to see curvature, uh, just jump out and test gravity for yourself and see how it works. Geronimo. <laughs> yeah. Ned, Ned Mike did a great job. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. I've got a documentary downloaded. Mad Mike and his uh, rocket fueled mission to prove the flat earth or something. But, uh, you know, we all know the end of that one. Um, Charlie, what about yourself? Thoughts and wrap ups, man. That was the first night on the clickety clacks and I'm enjoying it. And that was a I think we knew five minutes in we weren't going to finish that one. That was a <laughs> good conversation spur. -er. Yeah, great time. Great time. Agreed. That was awesome. So uh, I guess at this point, it's just time to uh, say goodnight, fellow babies. We're out of here. Good night, fellow babies. Good night. Good night, all. Be good and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Which is ain't much. No. <laughs> <laughs>